Brother from home, man. My name is Mark, and I'm the one entrusted with the awesome responsibility of taking you to your resort safely. Is this your first time? Yes. yes. What took you the heck so long? <laughs> In Jamaica, we like to say better late than never, all right? All right. And as we go along, please feel free to ask any questions at all you might want to ask. If you ask me a question I can't answer, I'll just make one up. You won't know the okay. difference anyway. <laughs> all right. So this is where we are. Montego Bay is right here. And we are going a little bit farther east to here, to Runaway Bay, which is usually an hour to get there. So if you're watching this video, I'm assuming that as a creative, you probably have a bit of a client base. And this client base maybe has some travel plans for their business. And you may not know that yet, but if you apply some of the things that I'm gonna mention in this video, your clients may extend projects to you that include traveling. We'll talk more about that in a minute. So we're in beautiful Jamaica and getting here was, was quite fun. Our driver was amazing, it was really funny. And it's always a good experience getting your first impression when you land into a new country. And I've never been to Jamaica before, so it's good to kind of match your first impressions with your experience within that country after you've been there for a few days. So this video's topic is about traveling as a photographer for free and actually getting paid on top. Before we get into the topic of the video, I'm gonna answer some questions that you've asked me through Instagram. One question was, are you in Jamaica yes second question while this photography job you have done yet so a couple weeks ago I traveled to Halifax Nova Scotia and there was actually a historic storm on the way to traveling to Halifax and I knew about this it kind of was an experience and I wanted to take a chance I believe that taking risks is is very important I landed in Halifax the electricity was down no internet and my phone was not getting any service like it was an experience but I think the product that came out of that was really good because of that experience. Traveling into a storm, that's probably one of the crazy ones. Another question, how do you manage funding your projects? How do you market yourself to get sponsors? I don't actually have any sponsors and I fund my projects personally. I run my own production company. I do photography and high-end video production. So with that, I take small portion of my income and I fund my personal projects, which my personal projects are really not that costly um, they're more time consuming but they're really not that costly I'm working on possibilities to get sponsored in the future for sure but it's kind of hard because it's usually the gear companies that sponsor people and I want to choose the right brands and I want to choose the right products that are intentional but yeah time will show that in time but right now I'm not sponsored and I fund my own projects how do you think of transitions I think this question is coming from an Instagram perspective I make stories with like cool transitions and stuff. I have to think about what I'm gonna do that day or that event. Sometimes like the best thing is like if I'm traveling somewhere, I would show a bit of my journey getting ready and I'll transition into the plane or the destination. What I always keep in mind with transitions is that they need to show a time difference or, or a location difference. So it's not just that they look cool, but they need to actually mean something. When you started video editing, did you buy LUTs or did you just start color grading yourself? So in the beginning, I bought LUTs because they were, they sounded good. You can get like LUTs from the Dark Knight movie or like you can get the Hollywood look, the cinematic stuff. And you know, it all sounds appealing in the beginning, but you throw it onto your footage, it doesn't really look the same. What LUTs did for me mainly was just, it inspired me to color grade in it in a certain way. Now what I do is the only LUT that I use is just a log to Rec 709 conversion LUT on my on my Fuji X-T4 footage. And then on top of that, I'll do another adjustment layer and I'll just color grade in a stylistic manner, if you will. But I guess with color grading, it's important to convert your footage into an actual Rec. 709 so that it looks like standard, you get the colors back and then you can tweak from there. As soon as I discovered that, which was pretty quick, I know the LUT look wasn't really for me. Were you born in Canada because you have a unique accent? No, I wasn't. I was actually born in Turkey, moved to Canada in 2006. I was 12 and I guess I carry some of the accent. What is the number one piece of advice you would give to a new photographer? There's a lot of things I can say, the cliche thing about not being so gear or equipment oriented. 
that would be one. But that's kind of like an old advice now. Because one thing that happens after you get all the gear that you want is that no matter what happens, you hit that creative block. And at that moment, when you are in that creative block, it doesn't matter what kind of gear, what kind of lens, what kind of camera you have. So my advice is find out what makes you creative. Find out rituals that enhance your creativity and definitely connect with your inner self to go over that creative rut. And at that moment where you're actually on top of your creativity, the type of camera you have or the lenses that you have doesn't really matter. And yes, there's the obvious stuff where gear matters. Like if you're a wildlife photographer, you probably don't want to shoot animals at 50 mil. You need a nice telephoto lens for something like that. Like once you choose the right gear, the whole gear topic should be left on that equipment shelf. You should only grab that topic when you actually need it. Other than that, photography, filmmaking, anything creative has to do with creativity. We'll do two more questions. I discovered you through the Peter McKinnon film. Will you be releasing new stuff like that? Yes, I will be. Um, there's so many other stories that I want to tell and I just finished writing a new one. So I'm excited to start working on that. And now we'll take the last question, which actually shaped up today's video. I was trying to come up with a video topic. So this last question is the topic of this video. How do you have so much money to travel countries? Now that question requires one answer. I don't have that much money to fund myself to travel all these countries as well as maintain a life in Canada. I mean, I can make that happen, but it just won't be smart. So how do I travel? The answer to this question will be from a photographer, from a filmmaker perspective. It won't be coming from an influencer perspective because I'm not. So I'm not going to show you ways to uh, market yourself with other brands and get sponsored to travel. That's not what we are talking about. If you're a photographer, if you run a production company, if you're a videographer, there is a lot of chances for you to travel the world without paying anything and on top of that, getting paid. My traveling journey began last year. I got to travel Europe. I got to see some of the most historic, most influential spots in Europe, took pictures, captured footage, and then all of that was part of a campaign that I was working on. Although I don't travel all the time for work, I still do just enough to get my travel fever out of my system. A few weeks ago, I was in Halifax, and now I'm in Jamaica filming an international retreat for Jessica Fraser, who you actually know from this channel. Although there are many ways to make this happen where you can actually travel for work, I'm gonna list three things that I think matter the most. And this first one, I keep saying on this channel a lot, be an asset and not just a photographer or videographer. You know, times are changing. Even social media is trending into a video focus. If you're just a photographer, learn how to take videos, how to make good videos. If you know photography and video, then maybe start learning social media and how the algorithms work because a lot of the businesses are marketing on these platforms. So if you know the way to work through algorithms, you would save them budget and time if you know how to create the right content. So don't just be one thing, be an asset. Be like a Swiss army knife. So that's number one, do your best to be an asset. Number two is make sure that your projects that you're completing with these clients are multi-purpose. With your clients, work on building libraries that you can actually create more stuff for them in the long run. This is actually really beneficial for clients, which is going to require you storing footage, which will be expensive, I know. But at the same time, this is a huge value for your clients. So if they know that they won't only get one piece of content out of flying you somewhere and if they know that this is the long-term thing where the footage from this travel could come out and work with something else with another campaign that they're working with or a different product line they're working with it would be a huge asset and lastly this is kind of an obvious one but you need to be reliable. Let's be honest, it's expensive to stay at a hotel for a week, it's expensive to fly to places, and this is a huge investment for your clients. If you haven't proven that you are reliable locally, chances are they will never fly you out somewhere. If you're late to your meetings, if you're not prepared, or if you're just not giving them good products, they will never, they will never take a risk on flying you somewhere because they already know that they can't trust you. This is an obvious one, but can easily be forgotten. So just be mindful of being reliable. And remember, if you do make it out on these trips with your clients, it's always work first. You need to provide them with what they ask you for. You need to do your best. And if you have extra time to do whatever else you want to do, 
that's your thing. And something else to remember, if you were to get another project or potentially create another video or another campaign for your client, doing that locally might be more profitable for you rather than traveling. Because instead of traveling, you could just charge them for another project, but you won't get the experience. Then if you want, you can travel with your own money. But coming to places with clients and doing projects for them in other countries and other experiences, it's a lot more than making money. Your clients trust you with their plans, with their dreams. So that means a lot. On being reliable, always remember that these people took a risk and their, their dreams are on the line essentially because there's an expectation of you providing something. Being a part of someone's dream means a lot more. And this is tied with the beautiful travel experiences that you might have. So yeah, that's it. I've got a couple more days here. I'm back to Canada. And then we're going to go somewhere really unique. I'll see you guys in the next video.